Welcome to yet another edition of the brand called You. Today I have a young founder who's doing some amazing work in, work in health. Shalab Gupta, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Shalab is the founder of Akiva Superfoods. He's from IIT Delhi and I am Ahmedabad. And he has done a stint like a lot of our young uh, founders with McKinsey. Yes. Uh, Shalab, tell me a little bit about your early career. So, so like you said, uh, my early career was mainly McKinsey. I spent the first five years of my career in McKinsey. The, the next five years, uh, uh, the next sort of four years plus some in the startup. Um, so I was a management consultant with McKinsey, uh, did a bunch of things, worked on a variety of projects across industries, across geographies, um, spent, uh, uh, spent a couple of years out of those five in the San Francisco office. Mm -hmm. Um, which was a very, which was very rewarding and a very, I think, uh, a hugely formative uh, stint for me mm -hmm. uh, because it, it allowed me my first major exposure in in working internationally, working with international teams. Mm -hmm. um, among other things, I realized how how global the f the firm truly is uh, when you can land in a new country and uh, literally from you know within an hour of landing in that country you can start working on something mm -hmm. and it's as if it's as if nothing's changed between your domestic office and, and this one uh, but it also indirectly led to the starting of of akiva because uh, living there uh, as a customer i was exposed to the to health trends uh, to trends in packaged mm -hmm. foods um, i developed a number of healthy habits that i wanted to bring back with me when I when I came back to India um, after that step. So, um, so, so McKinsey was, was quite an important thing in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of learnings as well. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I read somewhere and I've experienced as well that the first, first, I think, first couple of places you work in or first couple of bosses you work yeah. for. Yeah. Um, it's an incredibly educational experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I still remember my first day at McKinsey and the things that my manager told me, which I'm sure he's completely forgotten, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to forget them. Um, so, so learned lots of lessons, okay. learned that uh, excellence is every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a firm which is a very, which is full of very driven and ambitious people. Uh, so excellence is every day. Uh, learned that no problem is, uh, is unsolvable. Uh, I think uh, consultants, uh, uh, just uh, feel like every problem, no matter how big or serious, whether it's the coronavirus or world hunger or, or yeah. some third or fourth thing, can be broken down into its constituent parts and, and solved. Um, and uh, uh, also learned the importance of communication. Mm -hmm. That when you have, if you have a good idea, it is incumbent on you to make yourself understood. Correct. And it's not the audience's problem if they're not able to understand or make use of your good idea. Uh, so that was, I think, a, a fundamental shift that I've, I've carried with me. Okay. Wonderful. So let's move to Akiva Superfoods. Before I ask you, what is Superfoods? Tell me, what does Akiva mean? So Akiva, there's a very interesting story behind how the name Akiva came to be. Uh, uh, and uh, it's as, I think it's as prosaic as Basically, I, I had no idea about trademarks or, or any of these things. And I had a different name in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then somebody put me through to a trademark lawyer. And uh, she said, look, the name that you have in mind is taken. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, we were already kind of late. Our product was ready, etc. So we needed to put labels and packaging into printing. And I had about 24 hours to, to think of a new name. Mm -hmm. So what I had in mind was that we were a healthy brand, which was going to have a lot of, uh, I wanted the brand name to be slightly feminine. I wanted it to, to sound like something that a lot of our women customers would, would embrace. Mm -hmm. I also wanted the name to be somewhat Sanskritized mm -hmm. at the same time modern, mm -hmm. uh, because I had this image of building a global brand in mind. So I essentially, I sort of went through a few hundred baby names mm -hmm. uh, and I settled on, on Akiva because I really liked it. Um, uh, as it turns out, uh, because now I've, I've been speaking to a few international investors, so I was informed that Akiva means, uh, it means protection in mm -hmm. Hebrew. Okay. And it's also the name of uh, one of the one of the most uh, revered rabbis wow. uh, in Judaism. Wow. So I think, uh, uh, you know, 
I'll take it that as a sign from yeah, so from a god. I agree with you. Well done. Well said. And what is a superfood? So, you know, superfood in its essence is basically a healthy food. Um, I love how uh, uh, I think Indra Nui at PepsiCo uh, split their portfolio mm. into good for you, better for you and fun for you. Mm. Uh, fun for you is exactly what it sounds like good for you is stuff that is that is actively healthy maybe oats uh, etc in their portfolio and better for you is things that may or may not be healthy but are better are superior substitutes to the unhealthy stuff so i think superfoods is anything that is in the good for you bucket okay um, and uh, where we are concerned we actually concentrate on the on the supplement side of foods so not only are uh, our products healthy um, they are uh, they are in fact uh, uh, quasi medicinal okay almost mm -hmm. wonderful and you know when i was reading about uh, akiva your line is that it's a contemporary and high quality health food line yes help me uh, understand this yes yes so uh, so we've chosen a lot all of these words yeah, with sure. great care mm. um, the we chose the word contemporary because you know uh, super there is no um, i don't think only the young or the contem or, or the modern have a claim on superfoods uh, our own tradition is thousands of years old and uh, starting from ayurveda 4 and 1/2000 years ago etc so we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of incredible ingredients and traditional recipes that very well qualify as superfoods in fact we've based a lot of our products on ayurvedic recipes the reason why we call ourselves contemporary is to continually remind ourselves that we need to reinterpret those things we need to reposition those uh, those products as a brand that appeals to millennials or or to urban customers um, we need to make an effort to uh to bring innovative form factors innovative packaging uh to the market so we need to modernize and contemporize um uh, you know the the ingredients and formulations we're using uh at the same time we also need to we also need to not anchor ourselves only on tradition and push ourselves to to think of uh to think of for example supplements that can be synthesized from from molecules mm -hmm. uh so that's something that we don't do currently currently all our products are grounded in very natural uh, processes and ingredients but as a contemporary superfoods brand that's also something that we are willing to to go towards um uh, and uh, the high quality i think is just a reminder that uh, that that's at the heart of Correct. any food business uh, we are asking customers to put our products in their bodies to make themselves healthier and it's incumbent on us to to give them high quality products um to be able to feel confident that our products are manufactured in the right way sourced in the in the right way um not just in terms of quality but also in terms of fairness the places we we source from etc fair trade and and so on are aren't big things in india yet um but uh, but at least the partners that we work with you know we are we are proud to uh, to to work with them and to see the kind of partnerships they have with with right. their uh, cultivators and so on interesting so one of your products is a health shot yes mm -hmm. yes tell me a little bit about health shot and when should a person take a shot uh, so health shots is our uh, is is actually our main product and it's our flagship product it's it's where it all started mm -hmm. uh, it all started with a very simple question that i asked myself uh, Uh, you know i was back in india uh, we had this and i noticed one day that, and i already had these ideas swirling in my mind about starting something in mm -hmm. food and beverage starting mm -hmm. something in, in healthy mm -hmm. uh, foods um and i noticed one day that we had this bottle of amla juice sitting in a corner gathering dust and i asked myself what is it that's preventing us from from consuming, consuming it uh, and the answers that came back were you know it's it's not tasty it's not convenient it's it looks terribly old fashioned uh, and so on and so forth uh, and uh, and some of the brands that were you know at the forefront of i think repopularizing uh, amla juice and so on were actually doing very well for themselves 
but i think uh, the customer that i i call the the, the child of the patanjali customer correct you know that customer was fully aware and had a lot of trust in this product but uh, very little adoption mm. so i asked myself a single question a simple question what's it going to take to make amla juice exciting mm. and that was the origin of the health shot okay uh, because it needed to be not only tasty and uh, and uh, convenient convenient yeah. and and exciting in a way um, it also needed to be contemporary mm. in in a uh, in i think a, a disruptive way mm. and that's how we we thought of this test tube as the form factor okay. for the product um we also thought of packing it in packs of 5 and 6 because we were ultimately we were delivering a habit a healthy habit we were not delivering an indulgent sure. uh, drink so uh, so a health shot effectively is a i think it's a uh, it's a a shot of a healthy or a functional um, juice hmm. um something that picks you up quick something that can pick you up uh, quickly or it's something that can build your immunity over time hmm. improve your skin improve your digestion yeah. help yeah. you lose weight um can have anti diabetic uh, properties uh, can be a variety of things hmm. what we don't do is a is a product that is merely tasty hmm. um so they're all all our shots we have six of them all our shots are targeted towards specific health benefits backed by uh formulations that are that are based in science uh number of ingredients coming together in in specific uh proportions to help us attack uh, that problem um and over time you know really like really validated to see how many customers write back and say hey this this thing helped me solve this problem or this thing uh is something that i've i've been regular for months or or even now years uh, with and it's really sort of helped me where a lot of other things didn't mm. uh, so so that's what a health shot is i think it's it's in a way i think of it as your best shot at maintaining a healthy habit okay. uh, and uh, and when should you have it i think it's it, so different things for different shots mm. um, we've got a digestive shot which is grounded in trifla mm. and that's something that you should have lasting uh in last it should be the last thing you have in the day for sleeping um we have uh, something like an amla shot which uh, you should have on an empty stomach uh, in the morning so it's different mm-hmm. for for different shots and predominantly ayurveda based i would imagine predominantly ayurveda based because that was the that was the way we started mm-hmm. uh, so the the starting was to contemporize ayurveda we now think of ourselves as a more holistic health food company and uh, therefore we are starting to infuse ingredients like activated charcoal um, which which don't have a mention in ayurveda uh, but uh, the uh, because of the legacy uh, i think a lot of it is ayurveda uh, okay. very interesting so my question to you is that you know too many people are making too many claims sure. about superfoods yeah you know we've got thousands of people who will listen to you and me speak sure and view us sure how does a viewer determine what is the right super food um so that's that's actually a it's a great question it's a really tough question to answer uh i think you know one of the uh, i mean if i could digress for mm-hmm. a moment mm-hmm. one of the tragedies of our educational system is that we get out of school and college knowing all about maths and science in the solar system and what not we know very very little about nutrition correct uh, which is something that we engage with on a on an everyday basis so and start learning when we are in from mid 30 or yeah start learning once the bell goes off correct. once you realize hey you know uh, my uh, my my sort of parameter the normal yeah say. i'm not bouncing back the way i used to <laughs> yes. uh, after the previous night or whatever and when you get to my age the bouncing will get bouncing back gets slower and slower maybe yeah yeah uh, so uh, so it's 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 but it's better late than never of course sure um unfortunately i think there is no single answer to this uh, i think in the absence of formal education mm-hmm. uh, one has to do one's own research mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of good quality stuff out there. there's a lot of great books there's a lot of people uh, writing about it on the internet etc what i do is i follow i follow i think one simple principle which is don't do anything in excess mm. uh, and uh, in fact a second principle which is 
uh, follow your instinct to some extent. Mm-hmm. So I think combining these two, what I do is uh, at least personally, uh, I don't impose strict barriers on what to eat and drink mm-hmm. on myself because I think life is it's important to be healthy, but it's also important to to enjoy uh, life. Yeah. And one shouldn't make oneself a patient mm-hmm. before one is that. Yeah. Um, uh, at the same time, it's important to develop a mindset and, and a habit of not doing anything in excess. Uh, whether it's the occasional indulgence uh, or it's health. Mm. Uh, I think going overboard on health also takes away from uh, from enjoyment of life and can actually um, can actually be counterproductive mm. uh, almost. Where uh, if one goes, I think too deep into, for example, you know, if you start working out four times a day, that's not a great sure. thing either. Sure. So, so sure. there is bitterness at the bottom of every cup, yeah. including with this one. Very good. So, you know, one more question or, or two more questions on uh, Akiva before I move to the sure. next segment. The first, the first question is on uh, rediscovering what we call a lot of our superfoods. So, yes. A ghee yes. or a turmeric. Yeah. I mean, there are so many superfoods that in India, yeah. we have always taken for granted. Yeah. But now suddenly we are learning about them as the Western is coming. Right? Yes, yes. What is happening in this space? See, I think there you have it. So part of the answer is in, in, the, in the question itself. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is an area, in fact, that I feel, I feel deeply passionate about. I think we are, uh, you're right, we're definitely rediscovering we're rediscovering not just our, I think, nutritional heritage. We're rediscovering our heritage, heritage in every way. Absolutely right. Um, and uh, at the heart of it, I think, is something very simple. We are becoming economically stronger, and the uh, the positive side effect is being felt in everything. We are we are rediscovering pride in our uh, in our country. Uh, we are uh, no longer looking to the West for uh, for validation or approval Correct. for everything. Correct. Um, and I think stuff like ghee and turmeric are a combination of, of two things. Uh, one is that whether or not we want to look at the West, the West is discovering those things, mm-hmm. popularizing them, mainstreaming them. And uh, we, are, we are getting some additional confidence from that. Uh, the second is that we're all waking up to health and realizing that what our ancestors were doing was natural and instinctive and healthy all along. Correct. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, and we're much better off doing that than blindly following what, uh, what perhaps, uh, you know, big food uh, is, uh, is helping us. Sure. So ghee is a great example where I think there was an entire generation, maybe a generation and a half yeah. that, uh, you know, didn't touch ghee, didn't touch ghee yeah. and went to vegetable oil and vanaspati, etc. instead. Uh, and I'm sure for a for a long time it was considered healthier, and, and he became this fatty, correct, the saturated uh, fat, the saturated also, yeah. fat, the Absolutely. cholesterol, and so on. Yeah. But uh, but now you have people who are, uh, I think, uh, you have people who who look like you and who talk like you, and who are telling you he is better than uh, than correct. the the stuff that you were having earlier. Yeah. So it's it's helping build that credibility. So uh, shall I have one more question, um, and that's about millennials. Yeah. How are millennials? changing the way all of us in India are consuming our food, adapting superfoods, etc, etc. Um, I think millennials are changing, uh, they're, they're changing everything in every way. They're changing uh, us as business owners. We are having to respond to it by marketing ourselves differently, by, by reaching them where they are spending their time, which is uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and OTT platforms. Um, uh, we are also, uh, I think they're also changing the landscape in the sense that th- this is the most individualistic and the most confident uh, generation. generation. This is also a generation which from an early age has, uh, has agency, mm-hmm. you know, is empowered to make decisions for themselves. Uh, and uh, has been empowered to be consultative in the family's decision making. Mm. So what we are finding, for example, is that a, that a lot of our products are reaching families via the younger people in, in that family. Uh, could be, uh, you know, 
could be could be a young sort of uh, you know a young wife and mother who's who's now introducing her approach to the rest of the family including her parents and laws and so on could even be the kids uh, the teenagers or the early 20s folks who are going back home and telling their their parents mm-hmm. or their you know elders that here is a product that that you should try uh, they have not heard about us because they're not on, on social media mm-hmm. uh, but their kids or younger brother sister whatever are so uh, so this is something that used to not exist uh, earlier i think there was the it was quite clear who the customer was and for example for grocery the customer was going to be the housewife uh, for uh, you know for let's say vehicle purchases it was going to be the dad and so on and so forth and now everything is changing because it's possible that you hook the kid mm. to get the dad to buy the right car and it's possible that you you reach the teenager um, who is troubled by maybe their skin problem uh, and you get them to introduce our shorts mm. uh, with a variety of benefits that address different yeah. needs in yeah. in the family so so i think it millennials are becoming a very powerful um and measurable mm. way for us to find new customers and new households measurable because because they're digital uh, and we love being digital our dna is also to be digital mm. and be data savvy mm. and we're finding that the we're getting uh, we're able to measure very granularly what are ROIs mm-hmm. uh, on spends etc relatively small brands like ourselves are able to make targeted interventions Correct. and switch them on and off which was not possible true. earlier yeah very true so my next question to you is you know to all thousands of people who watch us speaking and a lot of them are aspiring entrepreneurs so sure. um want to start their own startups etc what would your advice be to a young individual wanting to embark on a journey of an entrepreneur um i think my my advice would be to uh to do a lot of soul searching um uh, and put in a lot of careful thought before getting into uh, before getting into this uh uh i think there are there are uh you know there are some narratives that acquire currency uh, which can be misleading because there are many different paths to success uh, even within entrepreneurship there are many different paths to entrepreneurial success mm. one can start right out of college one can in fact one can drop out of college and start billion dollar companies like uh, some incredibly famous sure. entrepreneurs have done one can start right out of college uh, one can uh, one can work for a few years and and acquire some necessary skills in network and then start up mm-hmm. uh, or one can build a, a fairly senior corporate career mm-hmm. uh, and then start with with uh, with some advantages of of financial security networks and, and so on and so forth uh, you know to take a, to take a contemporary example uh, michael bloomberg mm-hmm. Uh, may very well be the next president uh, of the united states started his company i think uh, in his late 40s or maybe 50s um and uh, uh, you know and 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 didn't at all do what a mark zuckerberg did mm-hmm. for example so i think i think youngsters tend to concentrate on on just the you know i need to start now i need to start now i'm i'm 25 and it's already it's already getting late etc yeah they need to do some soul searching because to me i think there are there are three components which are very very important uh, for entrepreneurial success and you've just got to do it when you think you have those three lined up sure um the first is uh, you've got to have drive you've got to you've got to really want to succeed uh, and it's not at all a bad thing if you don't have if you're not burning with correct with that ambition and drive Uh, it's actually perfectly okay because life is multi-dimensional and one doesn't have to uh, be only this or nothing um, the second is uh, more tactically uh, the other two things you need to have the ability to attract talent and you need to have the ability to attract capital correct uh, and if you don't have one or the other the other may not mm. happen if you don't have both no matter how much drive you have the whole the you know the enterprise can't take shape So I think it just depends on when you have those things. Some people are blessed with uh with 
I think the mindset or the personality or yeah. the network or the family connections or, or whatever mm. that they have these things lined up right in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, something some people take longer, mm. uh, and some people will never have it, mm. and all three are perfectly fine. Correct. But making the wrong choice or making the right choice at the wrong time can cause a lot of pain. Mm. So, so my advice would be just ask yourself if you have those three things uh, lined up yeah. today, and then go for it. That's very well said. So I have time for two more questions. Um, what would be three words that define you? Oh, three words that define me. Um, so I think uh, I like to think of myself as creative, um, as uh, fair slash just, um, and as adaptable. Okay, those three. So my last question to you, and that's on failure. Yeah, you know, uh, you're still very young and may not have failed, but a lot of us fail a lot. Sure. Yeah. And in India, we don't teach children it's okay to fail. Yeah, everyone has to come first. Yes, yeah. or die trying, or, or die trying. <laughs> and if you, even if you do become yeah. first, yeah. then mother, the, mother, the mom will say, "Why are you associating with someone who's yeah. at the bottom of the class?" Sure. Yeah. Right. So my question to you is, what have been some of your learnings? From some of your mistakes or your failures, um, I think you know, like you said, uh, we don't teach our our kids to fail. We're scared of failure. Maybe that's changing because India has changed uh, from the India of of twenty years ago. Yeah. But uh, uh, and and also, you know, to be fair, I'm underqualified for this question mm-hmm. because I haven't failed in a big way I agree yet. With you. Um, and hopefully never will yeah. but uh, but you know i think the one of the big things probably the biggest thing that i'm i've learned and i'm learning is that uh, uh, a failure is okay um, and b there is there isn't quite such a thing as failure Correct. there is no absolute failure there's no yeah. black and white absolutely uh, every failure is an opportunity if you have the right mindset because if nothing else, it teaches you um, to 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 take an analogy, which I'm which I've experienced more. Um, you know, we all work for people at different times, and uh, and per- particularly as a as a consultant, one one works in a variety of different projects. One squeezes in a lot of bosses in a very small amount of time. True. And I've had some good bosses and some great bosses and some bad bosses, and. Uh, I think what I've learned from having worked for bad bosses is a lot more than what I've learned from Absolutely. working for good bosses. So yeah. failures are a bit like that. Failures are the bad bosses. You don't wish them on yourself or on any loved one, but you're going to get them all the same. And now you can let a bad boss break you mm-hmm. or you can learn uh, a tremendous amount from uh, from that experience because it, it forces you to search mm-hmm. inside on what's important. Uh, and on how you would deal with the same situation when your time comes, uh, etc. So I think uh, uh, what I've actively tried to do is put myself in more high risk situations where failure can happen. And even if absolute failure doesn't happen, minor failures and setbacks will certainly happen. And it's made me tougher and stronger. Uh, It's made me uh, get more in touch with my i think with with the core of who i am and what i want to do in life mm-hmm. it's helped me access parts of myself which uh, which i didn't know i had uh, it's helped me realize i'm i'm more resilient than i thought more adaptable than i thought uh, i'm a better leader of people than i had the opportunity to to test myself to be so uh, so i think failures make you feel like a warrior wonderful Shalat, thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you and I wish Akiva huge success, not just in India, but globally. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure as well. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You podcast. Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Simply search for The Brand Called You. Thank you and see you next week.